You know how I'm always saying life is about experiences and not stuff? Well, in that regard, I probably live like three lifetimes already. Let me explain. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. First and foremost, I hope you guys like my Christmas sweater. I wore it for you guys. It's supposed to be an ugly Christmas sweater, but I think it's pretty dope myself. Anyways, 2019 was interesting. It was certainly a transition that took place. In the beginning of the year, transitioning from 2018 into 2019, I was running a restaurant and it literally took a toll on me. My time, my freedom, the mental toll, all of that. I still have my corporate position as VP for user experience, which I did really well in. I had a lot of success. But once I gained some level of stability and controlling how chaotic my life had been, I went off the grid. Again, keep in mind that this is still the beginning of the year, but when I went off the grid, which basically encompassed me distancing myself from everything and everyone, even to the point of no longer spending the majority of my time in a place that I called home, I gained clarity. And when I say no longer being home, I'm talking about the place that I lived at, I practically moved away. When I was actually in town, I spent the overwhelming majority of my time in hotels in downtown Detroit. While doing this self-reflection and gaining this clarity, I realized that I had some issues that I really needed to address. One of those issues revolved around a fast lifestyle that I closely associated with gambling. And me being the person that I am, you know, I live my whole life like an open book. I dropped a video about it. Specifically, my life as a VIP high roller, what it was like, and why I gave it up. I realized that we, I got an issue. And there's some things I'm gonna have to change in order to evolve into the person that I wanna be. Apparently it was a big deal because the video did well over a million views and over 6,000 comments to date. More importantly, there were a lot of people that reached out to me as a result of that video and I did my best to help and reach out and be there for you guys. I even dropped a follow-up video while I was in Biloxi to address some of the issues you guys said you were going through. I don't care if you make a million dollars a year, you can make a million dollars a year and gamble a million dollars a year or gamble 1.3. Now you owe 300,000, you gotta make that up. It don't matter what your limits are. The whole idea is that you need to change your lifestyle or your mentality and make an adjustment so that you're not in a space where you're addicted to gambling. And speaking of Biloxi, I traveled a lot this year and I documented a lot of it. From Mississippi, I hit New Orleans and Mardi Gras for the first time. The darker it gets, the more crazy it becomes. I kind of like it. And it just becomes more nuts the later it gets. She don't even have a shirt on. No shirt on at all. It's just bananas, bro. Never seen anything like it in my entire life. Some of the other places I documented was Myrtle Beach, which will probably be my first and last time there. Minneapolis was pretty crazy, but I had fun. Man, I fell in love with Pittsburgh and I could see myself living there and I can't wait to get back. It was just like a bunch of castle looking glass buildings all surrounding a fountain. And then you had the walking horse carriage and everything like that. And it was like, they couldn't have gave a better impression of the layout and the city. And of course there were places that I didn't document because I learned balance. You know, in this phase of me getting clarity and reflected on my life, you know, balance was key for me to stay stable in whatever state that I was in. But all those places was awesome also, trust me. But having balance really teaches you to live in the moment off the camera also. By far, my favorite city had to be New York. <laughs> oh man. Chess in the park, ciphering, board games, concerts, free hugs, double dutch. But yeah, we're gonna head back over into Brooklyn, jump back on the subway, and we should be there in no time, like less than 30 minutes. Visiting New York completely changed my perspective on a lot of things, including but not limited to appreciating the value of time, and I also realized just how much I am a big city guy. I rediscovered my love for the unknown, 
meeting lots of new people. And the thing that a lot of you guys discovered me by, exploration. And it's this, traveling, living in the moment, self-reflection, quitting my job. Yes, I also quit that corporate job in 2019. I'm really probably gonna need your subscriptions now, considering that I'll be jobless within the next week. And spending the majority of my time when I was back here in Michigan. Spending that time in downtown Detroit helped me to really appreciate what Detroit has become and the direction that it's going. Video that I dropped about my city, Detroit, while I was in Pittsburgh, you know, the truth about Detroit. Show my city in its true form. Come in with an open mind and just talk about the real experiences. It's an awesome place, it's dope and I think that you'll continue to see that in the content that I put out in the future. I think that video really spoke to and said a lot of what us Detroiters that really believe in the city, what we've really been trying to say for a long time now. Detroit is awesome. And I started a new series this year as a result of that called The Streets of Detroit. As of the recording of this video, they've been working on the Hudson site which I'm not sure if that's going to be the official name of it, but essentially it's going to be the tallest building in Detroit when it's done. This is a task that's being taken on by Dan Gilbert, founder of Quicken Loans, owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and being built by Bedrock Detroit, which is one of the many holding companies for Dan Gilbert. Apparently, you guys really liked the first video in that series about Woodward. If I had to sum up this year, and again, my life on a larger scale, I've really lived a full life at least three times over. No, I'm not dying, nothing is wrong. I'm just really appreciative and thankful that I've been blessed with the courage to do the things that most people will never have the courage to do in their lifetime. I remember when I was informed early about an upstart businessman named Andrew Yang that had potentially transformational ideas about what the country could become and I had the opportunity to spend some time with him. And I did, I learned a lot, got to speak with him up close and personally, but I also reached out to some friends to, you know, step outside of their comfort zone, put down Xbox remote controls for a second, and to other friends, don't go to bed early tonight. The Netflix series will be there when you get back, join me. And of all the friends that I reached out to, only my homie Blake came. Everybody else had to get ready for work tomorrow, didn't feel like driving, whatever. Number one regret that people have when it's all said and done is they wish they would have gotten out more, been more adventurous, less cautious, maybe a little less comfortable, had the courage and really took the initiative to experience life. And my experiences are uniquely me, meaning I wanted to open up a restaurant. I did that. I had fun doing it. I learned things that you can't learn in a classroom for any amount of money. And then I came to the conclusion that I reached a ceiling in that space. So I got out of the business and now I give insight to others. I love seeing my favorite basketball players. So instead of wasting money on stuff, I bought season tickets to the Pistons games. And I'll be there when LeBron James and the Greek Freak and Anthony Davis dunks on Andre Drummond's head. If y'all had an opportunity, tell Andre Drummond to unblock me on Instagram. I party and live off the grid, regularly travel to places I've never been, and don't eat at chain restaurants when I go. I say yes when people invite me to events. We at NBA All-Star Weekend. I ordered a cyber truck because you don't like it and it's different. I live my life like an open book and I'm honest about my experiences because I'm not afraid of what other people think and I'm not afraid to be different. I did away with tradition where everybody I know has a formal dining room and I created a collab space and now we spend the majority of our time there. I guess what I'm really trying to say is if 2019 taught me anything, is to have more courage and be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Take this video as an invitation to start that podcast. Create that business. Stop being afraid to fail. Eat somewhere different and then order something you've never eaten before. Go somewhere you've never been. Take a road trip. Approach that girl or guy. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. Hang out with somebody you've never hung out with before. Go over somebody's house and dance. Go to a concert in another city and then dance some more. Explore your own city and then go meet somebody in another. If you've never ice skated before, go ice skating and then fall on the ice. It feels great. And then go roller skating. Step outside of your comfort zone every day and do something. Live three lifetimes is worth it. If you've watched the video up until this point, let me just take my time and say, I appreciate you for taking this journey with me. This year has been absolutely phenomenal. And then I just learned this morning as I was preparing to drop this video that I crossed 30K subscribers. I love y'all. Y'all so dope. And I couldn't have did it without y'all. I don't know what next year has in store, but I appreciate y'all right here, right now. I'll holler at y'all later.
Peace.